most women start a business? Is it passion, money, or freedom? Welcome to Female Founders, the podcast that takes you behind the scene with women who are founders and CEOs to help you start and scale a successful business of your own. I am your host, Nagelia de Ravine. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Female Founders. In this episode, we are going to have a conversation with Laurie Coombs. She is the founder of WWCM with a mission to support organizations in the areas of science, technology, engineering, art, and math, STEAM. Thank you for the opportunity to have this interview with you. I am super excited to learn about all the great things you are doing and the things that's coming up with your business and to share it with our audience as well. But you are um, in a career path that is a little bit different than most women. Can you tell us what led you to this career path? It's interesting. Uh, For me, this journey has been uh, 20 years in the making. So... Um, if you were to ask me in high school, what do you want to be when you grow up? Didn't really have a clear idea of that. In fact, I wanted to go into medical careers, um, some sort of um, doctor or anesthesiologist, um, you know, initially. And uh, in school, I even went for the um, medical degree. And I realized quickly, you know, after working at Bethesda Naval medical, Kaiser, Permanente, that that field really wasn't for me. So uh, my journey began then after that on Capitol Hill. And uh, interestingly enough, um, I started out in an accounting position. So um, I was in the Russell Senate uh, building, and that was um, interesting as well, because from there, I ended up working as uh, in the legislative uh, field, and I worked for Senator Chris Dodd of Connecticut um, as an intern. And I realized at that point, hey, maybe I like you know the, the legal field or, or poli sci. Um, I, I was just trying to find what that was, whatever that rhythm was. Still wasn't sure. Um, After working for uh, Dodd as an intern, I ended up working um, as a staffer for Senator Joseph Lieberman. And that was awesome because when he ran for uh, vice president alongside Al Gore in 2000, they appointed me female delegate to uh, the uh, national convention. And I ended up learning so much uh, within those years of working on Capitol Hill that I realized that, okay, am I going for my LSAT or am I just, um, you know, uh, looking to pursue the business side of things? So I ended up getting my bachelor's of science in business administration at Bowie State University and went on to get my master's in business administration. I really liked being in business for myself. I learned uh, early on that at some point, I don't know when, but at some point I'd like to be in business for myself. And so (laughs) I didn't know what that looked like. I didn't know uh, what type of business. Um, So for quite some time, I was um, a a financial advisor and I, you know, I had high net worth uh, individuals of 35 million above. I had uh, over eight different states that I uh, catered to with regard to uh, disability insurance, life insurance, health insurance, uh, small business succession planning. And um, for me, I ended up kind of liking the business side of things, but I still academically uh, craved more. Um, I went on to uh, work at Georgetown University And this was in the Department of Economics. And um, I did that for uh, a little bit of time, a couple years, I believe. And it was then that I understood what my calling was. Um, They were required to um, basically have a technical rep for their department. And so as departmental technical rep, 
you're responsible for website development, uh, maintaining web pages, developing them, sometimes from scratch. At that time, um, Cold Fusion was the thing. So um, that, that's really dating <laughs> how long ago this was um, from, from a, a standpoint now that we're in the cloud. Uh, but yeah. I digress. As the uh, graduate program coordinator, my job was also to kind of watch the budget. And um, I noticed at one point at Georgetown University, they were spending a lot of money uh, mailing their working papers, archives to Vietnam, China, all over the world. And I just thought to myself, this is a waste of money. Whether you have it or not, um, there's got to be a way to streamline this. So I, I brought this up to the, the chair and, and John said, OK, fix it. <laughs> and so he, he kind of just... Um, <laughs> and, you know, at this time, I'm 23 years old, um, running uh, this department. And I thought, OK, how am I going to fix this? We ended up um, I created a, a working papers archive that interactively um, cross linked with a massive database in Quebec. And so we were able to at that point upload all of the hard copy working papers and make them available digitally. And so that took some time. Um, but at that point, now you've got a working paper archive that is accessible 24 hours, seven days a week uh, globally. And you just cut down costs by thousands. And so to me, um, I realized I really liked tech. Um, I liked opening up the web pages. I loved code. And so from there, um, <laughs> Um, it, it was interesting because I got an opportunity to work at uh, Lockheed Martin, and they actually offered me a position wow. where I was able to um, submit the president's budget to Congress. So I would accept all of the uh, budgets from every agency in the government, and I was tasked to uh, brief FBI, brief um, all agencies on the new procedural guidance for budget submissions. And um, I was able to, at that point, write, <laughs> use my technical skills uh, for thousands of lines in spreadsheets in a way that, again, I, I realized that tech is really um, my bread and butter. Um, from then, um, I, I went on to other contracts that were within the Department of Defense, and um, I've worked for uh, many, many employers that have needed um, things such as intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, as well as um, your basic DevSecOps and cloud cybersecurity initiatives. So. Um, I, I am currently um, working on Earth Data Infrastructure, um, and right now that's at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. That initiative is going really well, and I've found my groove because um, I'm able to uh, work. I'm able to um, pursue my doctorate in cybersecurity simultaneously, and it works uh, for my lifestyle. Uh, being, um, I'm married and I, and I have uh, three daughters and they are all homeschooled. So, I, right. <laughs> so for me, it was um, imperative to find uh, some sort of job or career that enabled me to still put my family um, at the forefront. Uh, at the same time, um, I like to help others, whether it's uh, with veterans uh, or volunteering. So that's kind of how I got started in, in a sense with the tech. And, and like I said, it was 20 years in the making. So, <laughs> so I, I kind of condensed it. But um, I would say early on, I had no idea um, in terms of career uh, what I wanted to do. Yeah, but uh, the way I see it is that uh, you started very early. And... and um, 23 years old, usually they're not thinking like that. You know, we are more into the uh, party zone in college. We party, we have fun, we enjoy life because, hey, life's going to be boring later on when we turn 50. God knows. So you, it's a different path for you. You know, when, 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 when I think when we're partying, you are focusing on what's next for my life at 23 years old. So that's amazing, you know? 
<laughs> it's it's really amazing. Thank you. That if we, especially when it you comes think. to women, we don't think like that at twenty three. <laughs> Right. Um, you picked up on something that um, I, I think is key. Um, at the age of 14, my parents allowed me to work at a bagelry, which was within walking distance of my home. And it was maybe three or four hours a day. It wasn't, it wasn't much. But at that age of 14, it gave me a sense of responsibility, a sense of owning uh, my own bank account, making decisions with regard to my money and, and um, understanding supply and demand, um, especially when uh, my money was spent and I felt like I worked really hard for it and it, it was gone. Um, so you're, you're very wise to pick up on that. <laughs> um, by the time I was 19, I had purchased the first uh, condominium. And that time I was actually working for Senator Lieberman on cool. Capitol Hill. So um, I think um, to say at 23 working for Georgetown, um, it, it, it kind of aligns with uh, the path that I was already on. Um, but you are right. Senior year when everyone was going to Europe, I was working. So that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So um, now what inspired you to, uh, to actually say I'm going to start uh, WWCM? Okay. Um, so, you know, the, uh, yeah, there's, there's two, uh, WWCM Academy and WWCM. Uh, WWCM to start with. Management. Right. So that pretty much encompasses the DOD contracts and uh, some private um, industry partnerships that I have. Um, along my career, I've made uh, a, a number of, of partnerships. And um, to quantify that business model, it made sense to uh, start a corporation in order to uh, capitalize on all of those partnerships and organize it in a way that uh, I could hire other contractors if need be, to complete a mission, um, 1099. Um, at the same time, there are always contracts that you can, um, you know, be awarded if, if you uh, pursue those. Uh, but for me, um, I've always taken a, a slow and steady route. Um, I think this year it's going to change because I have been approached uh, by several uh, big companies to assist them with audit assessments and preparing them with regard to CMMC 2.0 initiatives. So a lot of these companies now are looking at my company for services and uh, we've got expertise in-house. I've got a bench full of systems engineers and developers and you name it, ready to go for these projects. And when I was working on prior contracts that had cybersecurity, cloud systems integration, it kind of, one thing just led to another and it just made sense to incorporate. So I've been doing that since I would say maybe even Lockheed Martin or uh, 2007 and just slowly, money wasn't a, a big thing for me. I, I've always been one to volunteer and assist, you know, with veterans I definitely like first organization robotics competitions. Uh, just over 10 years, I've done that, just judging those uh, competitions. And at some point, it just made sense to open up uh, WWCM Academy because I had built such a network of people that kept saying, hey, we want more of this. We want more of you. What can you do? Can you increase diversity with regard to the science and engineering community? We need more of this. And so that really started the journey with the, the WWCM Academy. It is not for profit, but it is really focused on just children, students, kind of like myself. If they're involved or if they're interested in any STEAM activities, this is an outreach, a way to reach children in cities or in rural areas that normally can't access some of these opportunities. So I've been able to partner with some of the 
uh, folks that I know, and we offer activities and we're expanding and growing. We've got crowdfunding coming up so that we can actually have private investors with some of our current and future initiatives that will help um, with the STEAM outreach for students. Um, I really want them to feel like they have a way to really look forward to their careers, even if they don't know what they want to do, because I was that person. And I do understand what that feels like. And it's okay to try different STEM areas or sometimes not even STEM. It, you, you've got you've to find your niche the best way possible. Yes, you got to find that thing that you connect with. Like you did, it takes you a while, but you find it eventually. Yes, yes. And I really feel like once you find it, it doesn't feel like work uh, because you actually enjoy doing what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a passion. It's something you just you just have fun with it. You just you enjoy it. It's like waking up in the morning. It's like that thing you're looking forward to to go and keep on working. It's like uh, even when you see engineering or scientists. You know, sometimes scientists barely get paid anything because they need to raise funding. They don't even have it. But for some reason, they get out of the bed. It's like the most exciting thing. Oh, I gotta do something. It's like whoa, dude, slow down. <laughs> Yeah, they, they really are solutions oriented. So with, when, you, when you're dealing with scientists and, and engineers and you say research and development, um, you know, they're jumping on it. So I do agree with you. <laughs> so with the academy, is it like something, um, do they, uh, you, you raise money for it and you provide the service to the students for free so they don't have to pay anything out of pocket? Correct. And so that's off of donations and uh, grants. Uh, if you um, take the time to go to the website, you'll be able to uh, learn more about what we do um, in terms of our current and future initiatives. Um, we really want to focus on ultimately um, what, the, what the children want, right? Um, right now, there is a, a, a push for um, Internet of Things, and we're doing gardening with, um, you know, using Internet of Things. So it's really smart gardening. Um, but, you know, currently we want to focus on science labs, research and development. In the long term, uh, we definitely want to establish a STEM museum that showcases the work of our students and ultimately provide a mobile STEAM laboratory for those schools that are in urban and rural areas, not everyone has access to STEAM activities and, and uh, we want to be inclusive if uh, at all possible. We also love to broadcast a local STEAM TV program for students as well as the broader community. And we are working on summer and semester break STEAM camps. So uh, the biggest thing is just Purchasing the, the headquarters that provides all of the ability to facilitate all the STEAM programs, that is uh, the big uh, to do with regard to the upcoming STEAM fairs, STEAM networking, uh, for the, the broader STEAM accessibility. Uh, that will really help students, and um, we're looking forward to, to that. Will that be a national thing, or are we focusing just one city or just a state itself? Right now, we are just focusing um, just on, on the, the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, but we actually want to go national. So um, as we grow, um, there are places and states that we have actually um, started looking at um, that are near, um, like, we work closely with NASA. So the Johnson Glenn Research Center is in Ohio, for instance. So there are places that we have been uh, looking at uh, that have NASA hubs. Um, so we would definitely uh, go toward those areas first, but definitely want to make it accessible across the United States for students. We have uh, the accessibility interactively online. So there's always that no matter where you're at, you can uh, plug in 
interactively. I love that. And I love the vision behind yeah. it too. And with your determination, I have no doubt. I can't doubt that at all. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> this is this is like a win-win situation. I don't even have to think you're gonna fail this because you have that determination when you want something, you go for it and you make sure you it's happened. That's how I talking to you, that's what I feel like from you. You don't stop until you get it. Yeah. <laughs> and I really have to thank the investors. I have to thank the partnerships and sponsorships and the people that I've met along the way. They've been uh, instrumental to success. So um, I, I can't do this alone. Um, you know, first, I always thank God just for waking up each morning to be able to be in a position to help others. And that is really what drives me. That is my passion. Yeah, without their support, these children wouldn't have the ability to have outreach initiatives and um, any of the mission statements, visions, or anything wouldn't be possible without those donations and uh, people that like to volunteer their time. Uh, so we're definitely always looking for folks with giving hearts and have that shared culture and sense of, of community. Absolutely. And you know, one thing that you said that I love, you said you cannot do it alone. And you are right, because running a business is a lot, especially when you're a mom, your wife, your aunt, you, you have a mom. It's a, it's a lot of work to handle. And plus you have a business and you have a nonprofit. It's a lot. So I'm, I'm just happy to hear it from another woman. I can't do it alone. So I'm grateful for the people around me. It's great to hear that. Yes. So a question that... A question that I have for you, you have been dealing with Army, Navy, Air Force, and other public organizations. So how does it feel to be able to work with a big, big organization like that? Because not every woman has that chance to say, I'm going to put my feet in that. Because it's, it's, a, main, uh, it's a male-dominated well, that's where you are right now. You are pretty much fighting with the big boys on the top. So how does it feel <laughs> to fight with them, actually? <laughs> yeah, you're very, very true. Um, even managing two engineering teams at NASA, I would say um, that is a very uh, real, uh, in terms of statistics, that, that data holds because I am the only female uh, amongst those two teams. Uh, so if you're looking at it from a DOD perspective over the span of 20 years, oh, wow. Yeah, this is a very male dominated um, industry. And uh, for me, I never looked at it from the standpoint of just being a female um, and, and going for opportunities. I kind of always just went for opportunities that were within reach. And if I had the confidence to to go after it, no matter what, I'm, I'm going to do it. Um, and I'm going to ask for the salary I deserve to be paid. And um, that's something that um, I, I actually was reading uh, your magazine issue in March when you were celebrating Women's um, um, History Month. And I was really taken back because when you look at how women contribute to all sectors in terms of billions of dollars, and we notice that we're not in the boardrooms, um, we notice that um, not so many of us are, are as high as, as those male dominated fields. It is, um, it's a reality that uh, in these male dominated fields, you will be the only uh, or very few um, uh, of the women that are in these fields. So um, it is an honor to be that. Um, but at the same time, I, I wake up and I, I, I just pretty much do what I'm, I'm tasked and what I'm capable of doing. And um, it's gotten me this far. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I'll continue uh, with that with that same approach and see how far it gets me. <laughs> <laughs> I think so far you're doing amazing because you didn't let the big boys kick you out yet. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. And in some ways, um, you know, 
I work on uh, Wall Street at, at one point, and um, there were equity markets that I, I worked with uh, folks that were um, with Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, and 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 the like. And I, I must say that is a very male dominated uh, industry as well. So I think I've just come to um, adjust. It, 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 I don't even see it in that manner at, at this point. It just really comes to capabilities and I'm sought after for niche capabilities that I have and I'm able uh, to um, provide those missions. Absolutely. So what are the key services that um, uh, WWCM offers? Well, uh, for starters, uh, we cybersecurity is a big one right now. Um, cloud systems integration, C5 ISR, and that involves um, your defense uh, weaponry. Um, sometimes you're dealing with um, next-gen systems that um, involve integrating systems of systems. So there's that. Uh, advanced air mobility is a big, uh, big one for WWCM. In February of this year, we uh, co-sponsored the 26th annual FAA Commercial Space Transportation Conference alongside, uh, wow. you name it, uh, SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, uh, Boeing, uh, you, all those, those names that you have, have come to, to know. And um, we were able to really connect and make partnerships. And so moving forward, we'll be leveraging those partnerships with advanced air mobility initiatives. So uh, when you hear that term, some people think immediately of smart cities and drones, but advanced air mobility also, it bleeds into the FAA um, arena as well, because we'll be at some point regulating the sky. And so when it comes to traffic management there and all of those next gen systems and regulations air wise, um, that's kind of where that conference uh, was focused on. And so I'm, I'm very blessed to have met so many people that are looking forward to future initiatives. Uh, with WWCM so that we can leverage those sponsorships and partnerships for the uh, commercialization of space. Um, at Dev, DevSecOps is also another uh, service that is uh, used at NASA. And um, you name it, if it involves AI, machine learning, or any next generation system service, that is really what runs this company. Wow. But you also um, been team up with uh, supporting uh, NASA. Can you collaborate on how uh, that collaboration is working? Oh, it's going great. Uh, we work on Earth data infrastructure, Earth data, um, moving their data into the cloud is, is the requirement that they have. And so uh, what, what is needed at this point is just really managing the tasks that developers are working on in order for the Earth data infrastructure to remain secure and uh, the initiatives move into the cloud at a high level. That's what's going on. But it's amazing that um you actually be able to create a company and work with so many different big companies. But my next question for you is, what is your goal? You know, you work with NASA, you work with Air Force, you work with the Navy, you work with the Army. So what's next? Because I feel like you all pretty much work with all of them. <laughs> well, you know, ultimately, um, this February working um, alongside and meeting so many folks at the Commercial Space Transportation Conference, it became apparent that teaming uh, in just about every industry, whether it's manufacturing, realty, legal, financial, education, research development, aviation, aerospace, 
medical even or geospatial, I think that this company is able to offer all of those industries something. And, and I say that because there are teaming categories, let's say for manufacturing, when it comes to vehicle rapid prototyping, fabrication, metals, parts, uh, engine makers that use green propellant to combine chemical and electric propulsion. These are some of the things and, and systems that involve next generation uh, services. So uh, in terms of cybersecurity, that's an easy one. We, we can track supply chain materials and participants, and that's something that we can offer But even from the medical standpoint, uh, virtual reality, medical simulation for space crews is something that is on our to do as well. We also, in terms of geospatial, would love to team and work on two-dimensional hyperspectral imagery, data analytics, 3D printing satellite and antenna support. Uh, We have a a plethora of next generation systems that can assist from an autonomous software standpoint for operations and docking. Uh, This is important in space when you're dealing with the satellites. Any kind of advanced electronics with greater radiation tolerance for space computing is a big one. Satellite refueling, you know, the list goes on. And so being able to partner and meet those um, interesting people and, that lead these companies as well, um, it has set a stage for future initiatives with WWCM. And we're looking forward to that. Yeah, definitely. So talking about the... Um the academy, which is a big play, big part of what you are doing every day. And I know you have been cl- playing with that as well. So what would you say that the next step is to be able to create something online where anyone, anywhere you are, you'll be able to participate on it? Or the next step will be mostly focused on opening up uh, in person where people can come in and, and, and be a part of it? So two things, because COVID is a real um, epidemic, and it's something that we're still working around. Uh, it seems that there's a new normal uh, with regard to working in general. And we have teamed with the International Space Station National Lab, and we have activities that are available online for students. But ultimately, yes, in person is the goal. So that's where the crowdfunding, that's where the investors come in, because uh, we are getting large enough that we now realize that that's the direction that we're headed. And so I I do believe that at some point things will return to normal, whatever that new normal looks like. And we will be more than happy to have a a home base that is in person and and can host those, those live events. But for now, interactive has been uh, the way to go because of these COVID realities. Right. And uh, will anyone be able to join? Let's say that a uh, five years old. Do you have an age, an age that's kind of like, well, if you're five, you can, but if you're 10, you can't. So how does that work exactly? Yeah, we focus on K through 12, and we even want to focus on PSAT and SAT, um, uh, cultivating those skill sets for that. Um, Again, the the goal really is to assist children with their long-term career goals, whatever they may be, and um, I can just put myself in their Place. And I remember there was a time where I just didn't know what that looked like or what that was. So we want to give children the ability to try any and everything possible. Possible. So that you achieve all of these things. So in a personal, in, in, let's put the business aside, right? In a personal level, <laughs> how do you feel with all these things you achieved? You feel like you accomplished something in this world that as a woman, you 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 get into a male-dominated 
path and you rock it and uh, you work with uh, a lot of big com organization corporations and you work with senators all these things that you have done how do you with the accomplishment how do you feel i, I think it feels good because in uh, in our country uh, there aren't in terms of just black females that are really when i when i look on the media you know growing up as a child i didn't see myself represented and I think that for my children, they're homeschooled, so I have um, a, an extra um, duty, if not, to really um, create an inclusive environment for everyone. Um, you know, I, I was with my children this morning and, and they're getting ready for orbit camp. Uh, last year it was astro camp that they went to and, um, you know, they're, now nine and 10 years old. And um, when I look back at some of the experiences that I had, uh, because I had a mother who was a principal in the Montgomery County public school system in uh, Maryland, she was able to include me in programs like Odyssey of the Mind, Space Camp. Uh, there was a program called Create and a lot of these programs early on enabled me to dream. And one of the cultures that your magazine embodies is for young women and young girls and older women to dream big. And I can't stress that enough. If you don't dream big, um, you won't have incentive really to, to shoot for the stars. And you know, I don't know what that dream looks like for everyone. It's a little different. Um, but whatever your dream, I really encourage you to do so very big. And uh, that's something that I stress to my daughters. And even if I had um, a son, I, I'd say the same thing, you know, girl or boy, it really doesn't matter. Just dream big. Um, because that is going to keep you on that path of just being successful, staying successful, and, and being passionate about what you're doing. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you you have two, pretty much two uh, organizations. You have the uh, the WCM, you have the Academy, and you're also a mom and uh, a wife. So how do you manage <laughs> all of these things? <laughs> you're a very wise woman. These are all separate jobs. Yes, yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you know what I, I always say I've got a, a, a two year old she turns three um, in May and um, in, sometimes I say that she's more demanding than a boss because uh, at least a boss gives you time off you know she <laughs> she's a very um, you know at the age two years old is a very demanding age you know they, they need they need their mother they need their father and and um it's just, it's one of those things where you've got to have the work-life balance. And as I said before, it was always important to me. Um, early on, it didn't matter so much when I wasn't married and I, I didn't have any children. I could work midnight. I can work during the day. I, I literally would go to grad school from 5 to 7.35 and then from 7.35 to 10.05 you know, oh be goodness. done and then get up for work from seven in the morning till three, you know, at, at, for Senator Lieberman or whatever the case may be. Um, but, you know, I always kept those hours of seven to three thirty and I was able to go to class at night and it worked. When you don't have children, it's, it's easy to do. Um, now, I went for a master's degree at George Washington University from 2012 to 2014 and uh, I obtained my MS in systems engineering. And I have to thank my husband because he was able to really step in and uh, hold the fort down while I was taking classes um, at George Washington University. And that's not an easy thing to do working full time um, on the weekends, but it, it, it takes a lot, uh, especially because the customers that work with us have 
big missions because we're dealing with national security. And a lot of the mission support that we provide is so large and it's it's encumbersome. So yes, definitely you've got to be able to have a healthy work-life balance. Absolutely. Yes, I agree. And you know, um, another thing when it's come to starting a business as a woman too, we face a lot of obstacles and challenges, you know, um, being mom and then uh, the business starting and, and then we are trying to build it. It's a lot to manage, especially if also like you, you in school, it's a lot to manage. What were the obstacles mm-hmm. that you faced and how did you overcome them? Um, I think the big obstacles, um, and then everyone has their own obstacles, whatever those might be. Um, I would say just in terms of being maybe first generation or second generation, sometimes in your family to even get a degree, you've got obstacles of paying back school loans. And some people don't have those obstacles. And when you have school loans and let's say you're trying to purchase a home or you're trying to, um, whatever your goal may be, um, you know, those are some of the things that you have to consider because even when you work, the more you work, the more you pay in taxes. And, you know, those tax implications start to add up. Those um, things that we kind of take for granted um, are just some of the factors you have to consider when you are pursuing a career long term. Um, thankfully, I was able to um, pay my school debt off, but you know I created more debt when I went to get a, a second master's. And you know, working on a doctorate, I anticipate creating more debt. <laughs> so it's one of these things where it, it's a real challenge. And if you're raising a family. Uh, you have to consider what those tax implications will be as you are pursuing college. Uh, it's not just, oh, I'm going to you know, get out here and, and get a degree. No, you've got to really have a, a plan for the next four to, to five years of, of how this is going to be paid for, how this is going to happen. You need to have a, a strong uh, support group because when you're in school, if you have children, uh, you've got to you've got to work around that. If you don't have children, you still need support because, hey, you, you could get sick. You can, you know, fall. Um, anything can happen. So it, it is something to consider. Absolutely. And uh, you, you said you are going back for your Ph.D. What will that be on? Yeah, it's a doctorate in science and cybersecurity. Marymount University has a great program that uh, focuses on cybersecurity. And I thought at this time in my career, it'd be great to capitalize on the cybersecurity aspects of what I'm doing. Um, I'd love to learn more and to defend cybersecurity and uh, for now, this this is the path that I'm taking. It seems to be a, a, a great path, and I'm, I'm very glad I, I chose this one. Absolutely. And what will be, um, if let's say, for example, if someone want to support you, especially with the academy, how can they uh, support the academy? And uh, Because I know you're doing this out of love to help all the children, and uh, <laughs> you can use all the help that you can get. So how can they support you? Absolutely. If you go online to www.cmacademy.org, uh, you are able to donate. And when you purchase things for yourself or for your children or just simply donate, that money is going to be used to outreach other children and students. So HTTPS colon slash slash Academy. Dot org. <laughs> and um, you are successfully uh, built a great company and uh, now you have a nonprofit that is supporting uh, children, which is our next generation, which we need to focus on a lot. Um, 
Yes. And what will be your message to young female entrepreneurs, young uh, female founders that are starting out? What would you say to them so that they don't give up? Mm-hmm. You know what? I would tell them dream big. And and I honestly would tell them don't look at being a female as as a weakness. Um, I think that females bring a perspective that is needed in the marketplace. Um, I have definitely, looking back on my career, uh, I'm glad that I have been able to sit on hiring committees. I've been able to sit on scholarship committees. I've been able to uh, be a judge for FIRST Robotics as a female because sometimes there's a perspective that gets brought to the table that isn't even thought about. And I think it's that diverse perspective and that diverse way of thinking that really stimulates innovation. And so I would tell females just you know, keep doing what you're doing, dream big, and don't even look at the fact that you are female, just get out there, whatever capabilities you have or abilities that you're honing and cultivating, keep doing so. At some point, it'll all come together. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more, but because at the end of the day, uh, hey, we give birth. Everything that's actually in this world that, you know, <laughs> it's a woman. It's it got to do something with a woman, you know? So I guess we play a big role in this world more than anyone else. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you'd like to share with us before I let you go? No, I, I think this has been awesome. I'm very glad I had the opportunity to speak with you today. And I am looking forward to the next generation of young girls and and young women that will lead uh, this this nation into greatness. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And it's a pleasure to have you. And I'm I'm just grateful to meet a woman like yourself that's actually standing up and just don't give up. You you know, you you give you you give (laughs) hope to other to other women because we need more of that because when you are in a place where there is a thousand men around and you're standing there you're just the only woman it's like should i be here to be able to stand and just say i'm here and i'm staying and i'm not going anywhere it's mean a lot and if we if we can keep passing that message to the next generation they will be better and more women will stand up and then be there you know just be there because we need to do that and i appreciate it well said great conversation with laurie i don't meet too many women in the science and engineering field we need more women like laurie to continue paving for us thank you laurie for taking the time to have this conversation with me let me know your thoughts about this episode with Lori. And to learn more about Lori and WWCM, visit www.wwcapmgmt.com. Thank you for listening to Female Founders Podcast. That's it for this week's episode. Be sure to follow us on your favorite podcast app or connect with us on womel.com so that you don't miss our next episode. See you next time. Bye for now.